Hey, it's Jordan from TYT and TYT Politics, live from the North Dakota fire that keep, keeps on burning. And uh, I'm here with protectors. Uh, they are making a, a bridge to cross over uh, the water here to where their ancestors are buried, uh, where last night they found, uh, who the hell knows, whether it was DAPL security, state police, a mix of both, uh, hovering on their uh, ancestors' burial ground. So they're going, building behind us, which we've been reporting on tonight, a bridge made of uh, a lot, a lot of wood uh, to get back over there and pray to uh, rectify what they did. And uh, I'm here with a protector from Minnesota. Yes. And uh, we were talking before just about how this whole thing uh, that's been going on for months is just a continuation of what's been going on for centuries. Um, I'm from the White Earth Ojibwe Nation in northwestern Minnesota. And I was telling him about how... When you look at the international definition, the covenant of um, what genocide is, the United States has, has met all, uh, all um, aspects of what that is, from the mass murders to the forced sterilization of Native American women and Alaska Native women um, through Indian Health Services to um, the f um, stealing of our children you know, through the boarding school era, um, foster care, all of those other types, you know, other types of pieces. And that... You know, it, it was U.S. federal laws and policies that set all of this in motion. And those U.S. federal law and policies says they have to be expunged. So, you know, when we look at what's happening here, this is a continuum of genocide. This is systemic genocide. When you see how, you know, you have um, all of these law enforcement agencies, you have state troopers, you have... Um, last night we were told at the main camp that the uh, U.S. Border Patrols are now here, that everybody needs to be careful. We have planes flying over us with no lights on. We had a jet fly over us early with no lights on, and so low that our flashlights could actually hit the belly of it. Um, and when you see the, the mass media manipulation, um, it's no different than what they did in the 18 and 1900s to paint this picture that, you know, natives were the savages and we, you know, incite and fear and, and all of these different types of things. You see that played out today in 2016 that you have Morton County Sheriff's Department out there lying to the, the, the public generating this type of um, fear. And if you look in camp, you ha there's nobody armed. It's not just Morton County lying, it's no. the media oh, the delivering <laughs> the lies like well, little propaganda puppies. They prefer to listen to them than come here, so we don't have mainstream media covering this, so we appreciate you being here um, to to share the truth, the reality of what's really happening here, because you know the, the truth needs to be exposed, whereas in, in history we never had that opportunity to ha you know be able to truly tell our stories of what happened here um, through U.S. federal laws and policies of genocide and, and, and the continuum of what they're doing, you know, to take in of land. What they're doing, you know, when, when they threaten a water source anywhere, that's domestic terrorism. I, I called up my friend who is a veteran. I said, where are the veterans? You know, they, they swore an oath to defend this country from foreign and domestic terrorism. Well, it's here. You have people that are women, children, men, elders, unarmed, trying to defend and protect this homeland from domestic terrorism, where are they? You know, who's protecting the, the protectors, you know, in, in that way? So my vision was, is like having all of our veterans being dressed in their military best, unarmed, standing in front of everybody. What, what kind of signal would that send to, the, to this country? And I think it's really interesting because at the most base level, you know, when you're a kid, you're told the police are there to protect you. So all this force to protect an inanimate object, meanwhile, the people who they're supposed to be protecting, I mean, people around this fire are saying they're, they're, they're literally starting fires yeah. that could burn down this whole, this whole, uh, whole village of people, this whole camp. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, there's, they have no regard for our safety or for our health and our well-being. Our law enforcement themselves had sworn an oath to serve and protect. They're, who are they supposed to be serving and protecting? It certainly isn't the people. They're, they're serving and protecting corporations backed by, you know, I'm sorry, greedy politicians, you know, that, 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 that are supporting this, this corporate takeover. So, you know, we're here. I'm just, you know, very honored to be here to stand in solidarity with, with my relatives here, with all of our non-Native allies. You know, that, that this whole unity as, as, as human beings coming together and the global movement that we're seeing um, is, is a, it's just, you know, empowering and enlightening. Um, I think that people are awakening. And so hopefully this, 
this will change the, the, the course of, um, of history and, and bring awareness to we need to stop these damn pipelines. That there's no reason to have this dependency on fossil fuel. It's just money for, for those that are in power, the rich. We have, you have countries all over the world that have created green energy, we, we, you know, sustainable energies. I mean, I, I was just in, in um, Stockholm, Sweden. They, their river there is so clean you can actually drink it. Would you drink this water? No. W would you drink any other water in this country? Because of all of the, the contaminants, you have Monsanto poisoning everything. I mean, it, it's just, when and what, at what point will they stop and realize we have to think about the seven generations, our future generations. We're borrowing from our future, you know, and, and what, what, are, what legacy are we leaving them? So what I see with everybody here um, is we're being good ancestors. That, that's our duty and that's our responsibility is to be good ancestors. You know, I've been going around the country for a year uh, covering the campaign, and there were a lot of high moments, particularly with Bernie's movements. Uh, every Trump, <laughs> every Trump rally is uh, not the highest moment. But um, you see these slogans, right? Like "Stronger Together" for Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, whatever insane things he says, and it juxtaposed that with this. It's almost like there's a cognitive dissonance going around America. Because all this week they're talking about, you know, the future of America and our kids and our children's kids. And this isn't to attack Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump. But do you feel like there's a complete and utter uh, almost masking of what's really going on? Because I'm at these rallies and there's a complete disconnect when the people are cheering for whether it's Clinton, Trump, you name it. And the brutality and the complete whether you want to call it genocide of killing people or killing culture, whatever, what's actually going on on the front lines? It, it's a shame, even with, with President Obama, that their, their silence is deafening. You know, th this is their duty and responsibility at some point to be able to say, you know, how, how are they going to do this? How are they going to preserve for our future generations? How are they going to make America great again when th they're, they're outright declaring war on unarmed civilians of this country, you know, th to, to defend and protect, the, you know, the, the, the homeland? You know, from, from the greedy corporations that they back. They have money that's tied into this. You know, so when and where do, do we draw the line about where our, our potential president elects and, and our congressional people have stocks and bonds in the oil industry? Well, we should say that Donald Trump has invested in energy transfer partners mm -hmm. and Hillary Clinton, uh, one of her top bonds. One of her top bundlers, uh, I think Lisa Perry is her name, uh, her husband uh, own, own stock in uh, energy transfer too. So it seems like this revolving door that we keep seeing between the banks, the lobbyists, the corporations, the media, um, it's, it, it's flying over us as we speak. What, what's it going to take for people to wake up? I mean, you already said this has been going on for centuries now. Uh, is it going to take bloodshed? Is it going to take uh, more bloodshed? Uh, people being poisoned to death? What do you think is the end game? I think that I don't think it's going to be people being poisoned because we see that in Flint, Michigan. You know, all of them are being poisoned, and they passed passed what a state law that they cannot um, um, sue f uh, Michigan for poisoning them. Um, so they actually instituted an uh, illegal emergency manager who's actually creating the emergency. Yeah. So, so when you have, you know, a very genocidal system that is about money, it's about profit, it's about power, and it's about control. Um, what will it take? Will it take bloodshed? It, it never stopped them from before when, when you know, committing genocide. J just because um, we don't see that the mass murders like we like they did before, you know, like with um, Wounded Knee, the Sand Creek massacres, all of these different type of pieces, will that happen? They've, they've tr attempted, attempted it. You know, trying to send a fire over, over the bluffs towards the camp, to me that's attempted murder. You know, a m mass murder, right? How many people would have died should it have jumped the road? You know, the wind kept blowing this way. I honestly, I don't know what it will take, but other than just keep, you know, um, asking people to keep rising, keep standing, you know, raise your voice, be aware, come join us, come help. You know, people have to leave, go to work. We, we need people to continuously show up. So I'm hoping it doesn't have to end in bloodshed, but is that what, if that's what it's going to take, I know that people are ready to put, lay their lives down. They come here ready to die. They're ready to die for our future generations, for, for the people and for the land. What's your message for uh, President Obama? Because I think all the media, the day after Clinton or Trump's elected, they're all going to start writing their puff pieces about 
President Obama's legacy. I mean, this is much bigger than Barack Obama. But in the short term, he's the governor's not going to stop it. He's the only one who could stop this. Well, what is what is the message to him? Um, not only about stopping this pipeline, but uh, just what it would say about the overall fight uh, that pits greed against humanity. We voted for you. You have a country that voted for you. To Twice. Defend, to, yeah, to defend, to protect, to uphold our constitutional rights, our human rights, our civil rights. Why are you being silent at this point in time? Why did you just, you know, okay, you know, sign approval for another pipeline? Do you not see the destruction that's happening here? Who, who you're selling us out? You're selling out our future. Where is the Where is the Department of Justice? Where is the investigation? Yeah, that they're busy with the the CIA director for doing whatever the heck he did. But you know, I, I know there's a hell of a lot more people in the Department of Justice. Where are you? But why are you not here? Uh, it doesn't seem like they're really that concerned about what's going on here. Yeah, well, when it comes to, to Indians and defending the land, have, have they ever? You know, B Bill Clinton made promises, he never delivered. Um, Obama, he made promises. You had a tribe that adopted you and gave you an Indian name. That they, they, they wrapped you in a quilt, they recognized you, they brought you into our society. When one society can do that, when one tribe does that, we all have done that. We all are, are you know, we're, we're related. We believe in the same. And this is the best that you can do. We know you can do better. Stand up and be counted. Help us, defend us, or, or do our blood have to? Do we have to have you know our blood to be spilled before something happens here? Well, I mean, blood already has been spilled. If you look at the people being shot with rubber, bu you know, the rubber bullets and horses being shot, and you know, what else has to happen? What's it going to take? We've been talking about the doom and gloom and the genocide, but I think most people who aren't here don't see the beautiful moments oh, in, in camp. I mean, this whole thing is a beautiful moment, it you know? Uh, talk to me about, you know, your experience here and what people who might want to come down or just are supporting, uh, what they should know about the, the community, the overall community, but the little communities that are built every day. It, it's, it is so beautiful. It is so peaceful. Um, it's prayerful. People are laughing. You have children playing. We have dogs and cats running about. Horses grazing everywhere. It, it's it's just so kind. Everybody is so gentle and loving to each other. You know, people that you don't even know come up and, and hug you. They will shake your hand. You need help with something. They're right there to help. You need to put a tent up. You need to. They'll come to your camp and even ask you if you need help. If you're just busy, you know, out and about. You know, I, I had a, an elder uh, man and his son come and ask me in camp yesterday. Can we help you with anything? They, they, they don't know who I am. You know, so it's it's it's. You know, it, it's it's peaceful. It's just it's so beautiful. It, it's everybody here is is we're unarmed and. There's love, there's happiness, there's kindness, there's strength, there's resiliency. Um, it, it's it's a beautiful place to be, you know. And in a moment in time, it's like what I often had, you know, told people when I first came came here, um, was that if there was ever a time to know what it felt like for our ancestors to live in a community, you know, regardless of what what Dapple had brought 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 this you know, everybody coming here for, was. Um, was this, you know, what, what our ancestors knew about peace and unity, um, interdependency, you know, the, the kindness and love and living in balance and harmony with each other and Mother Earth. Um, it, it's it's, it's, it's a, a blessed experience. It's a blessed moment in time. And if you can, come help and, and you know, come have a cup of coffee or tea, come visit. Um, whatever you can do, we appreciate. So, miigwech. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thanks for talking to me. Appreciate it.